for our last video this week, I want to I want to write a, a piece of code. I want to write a React app. And I think recreating one of the ones that we've already done might help um, bridge the gap between things that you already know how to do and things that we want to represent in a React way. So in the first week, I use the I use this API, this recres.in API, and it lets you get um, paged data of users, and they have a first name, last name, avatar picture, and we use that to write an app that allowed us to create these cards using JavaScript in the DOM, CSS, HTML, and you know just display, do some front end work where we communicated with a backend API and presented all of that information in the front end. So what I wanted to do today was I wanted to use a tool, create React app, to build a uh, React application and then port over the code from the way we did it with uh, JavaScript and native DOM to working in pure React. And so that'll let us talk about lots of the ideas that we've already been working on here. So I'm gonna dive right in. And what I've done is I have both pieces of code. So I have the old code here that we worked on. So I'll just do like a real quick tour of how this thing worked. So if you'll recall, we had an index.html page. And essentially what we had is we had an element where we were going to place our application. So all of this that you're seeing over here is being built dynamically at runtime. It doesn't exist in my page. There's no HTML for this. The only thing I have is I have a script. So I have this source app.js. And in app.js, what I did was I hooked up a function callback uh, when the window has fully loaded and it calls our init function here. And essentially we, we load the users from the API. When that promise returns, we, we loop through all of these users and we produce these profile cards. So what I did back in the first week was I was anticipating where we were going with component-based approaches. And so I wrote our code in kind of a component-based way where I said, you know, we have this profile card constructor and then we use the profile card object to render uh, the DOM nodes, which then we append into the main element here. So, you know, you look at a profile card and a profile card is an ES6 class where I take in a bunch of data and then I render it out. And so hopefully by now with some of our discussions of React, this is gonna start to sound sort of familiar in terms of what it is that we have to build. All of our CSS lived in this one global CSS file and it produces this thing right here. So this works, but it's not interactive. One of the upgrades that we talked about in that video in the uh, first week that you could do was you could figure out how to do paging with multiple pages of data, go back and forth. Cause I'm only getting one page of data here. I'm getting six elements, but there's actually more users. There's 12 that I could be rendering. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start through the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use create react app. The way you use create react app is you do npx create react app my app. npx is a great little tool that gets installed when you install node, you get npm, you also get npx, which allows you to download and run a command in the npm registry. So in this case, I'm gonna do create react app my app, just like it says. What this will do is it'll download 10,000 modules and it will set up a new project for me and I'll be able to work with that project in a folder called my app. And I'm not gonna wait for this to finish. I've actually already got one of these started. And you'll see that once it's done, it also gives you a bunch of scripts. So you'll get an NPM start script that you can run. And that is what I'm running over here in this shell here. So this shell here is running my React app and I have the beginnings of my React app in this folder. So I'll just close this off for a second. So let me give you a quick tour of what you get when you create one of these things. So number one, you get node modules and there's tons and tons of node modules that get installed. So essentially what you're getting when you install Create React App is you could build a React app all by yourself. Like you could install all the modules you need, but what, 
Create React App does is it, it has made a bunch of decisions for you in advance. So that's why I call this a distribution of React. It has a whole bunch of other things that are together with it. Like for example, I just scrolled by Webpack uh, here, Webpack. So Webpack is being used to do the bundling, just like we used Parcel. When I did the, um, when I did the first week's example, we used a bundler called Parcel and Webpack uses a bundler called, or Create React App uses a bundler called Webpack, et cetera. So all of that stuff has been set up for you and you don't have to go and set it up. So that's what's really nice about using something like Create React App is that all these decisions have kind of been made for you. So step one is we have all of these dependencies that have been installed. The second thing that we have is we have a public folder. And everything that's in the public folder are your static assets. So if you have a logo, if you have an icon, uh, robots.txt, this is for Google and other search engines, figuring out what they can and can't uh, index in your site. And we also have an index.html page. So this index.html page is very similar to the one that we wrote before. So I'm just gonna draw your attention to a couple of things. Number one, you'll see that there's a no script tag here, which you may or may not have seen before. So the no script tag, what it does is it tells browsers that can't render or won't render JavaScript to print this message instead. So you need to enable JavaScript to run this app. So that's critical for what we're doing because we're going to put our app inside of this div right here. Just like I did with the week one project, if you look at the HTML we have over here, I just have an empty main element and I'm gonna put everything inside there. So JavaScript's gonna be what is going to put it, put it in place. So that's what's happening here when you look at this. So we're not gonna add any script files. We're not gonna put any CSS in here. All of that's gonna get done for us automatically uh, when it gets built. So you don't write a lot of HTML. You are going to focus instead on thinking about components. So that's what we have in the public folder, static assets. In the source folder, we have our React code. So at the top level, we have this file index.js and it sets up our project. So the two things that have to be pulled in, we have to pull in React and we have to pull in React DOM. So we're gonna be using React to uh, manage our state and to render our components, but we're gonna be rendering it into the DOM as opposed to into other systems like React Native. So we're using, uh, using it for the web. But we have some interesting things that we can do because we're using Webpack and the way Webpack has been configured. Like for example, this line of code is gonna look really weird. So this is importing a CSS file. And if you look at the CSS file, it's literally that, it's a CSS file. So normally you can't um, import CSS into a JavaScript file, that doesn't make any sense. And this also doesn't make any sense, just like this syntax here doesn't make any sense, this needs to be transpiled. So we have the step, that's part of what Webpack is gonna do for us. It's going to run Babel and it's going to transpile all of this so that it's possible to transform something like this, which is, you know, theoretically importing CSS into JavaScript, but this is really just a way for us to include Jav uh, CSS in our file. So we're not having to do it in HTML. We're also pulling in this app component. So at the top of a React application, you always have a single root element. So in this case, we're calling it app. And the app element is going to get rendered inside of a particular element in the page. So that's what React DOM is doing. React DOM is going to render our app inside of the root element. And the root element, again, is this thing right here. So we've got a net, we have a web page and the web page has a React app mounted inside it or hosted inside it. React is part of it. So React is gonna be responsible for, you know, everything, everything that goes on inside here, all of this is gonna be React, right? That's really what's happening, but it won't be there until runtime. It's not available statically. Okay, so let's take a look at this app. Inside app, what we have is we have a single functional component. So we are, again, importing a CSS file. And you can see that over here, I have CSS that's been defined for um, the way that this looks. And I'm just gonna clean this out. This is the default stuff that comes with 
um, your Create React app. Like when Create React app finishes, is this done? Yeah, so over here, this has finished. And if I go into my app, you'll see that I have um, all of this. Like it, I have the public folder, the source folder, etc. So that's what we're looking at over here. All right. Uh, this is another thing that I'm automatically getting here is I'm getting um, hot reloading. So one of the things you'll notice is that if I make changes uh, to any of these files, if I you know change this and I save it, you'll see that my app has reloaded and it's got the change that I did here. So another thing I'm getting for free by using Create React App is I'm getting automatic hot reloading for my development build so that I can work on this and it will tell me if I have any errors and it'll tell me what's going on over here. I can see it happening live in the browser. Okay, so what does app.js do? App.js is really simple. All it does for the moment is it renders out this a div and a paragraph element. Paragraph element is static text and the div, the only interesting thing we have here is we have a class name. So if I want to be able to style this information in any way, this is how I would do it. I would um, I would do it here. So we're gonna we're gonna work on this through um, building up the components that we need to make this work, and all of them are gonna be rooted in this app right here. You'll notice too that every one of my components is going to have a default export. So I'm writing my app function and then I'm exporting it here, which is the reason why I can import it on this line right here. And I import it as a default. So that means that I don't have to wrap this in braces to do it. I'm just importing the default export from the app file. Another thing that I want you to notice is that I'm not saying app.js. Instead, I'm, only, I'm just gonna give the name of the file and I'm gonna leave the extension off. And I'd like you to get into the habit of that because that's gonna allow you to use JSX, JS, TypeScript, TypeScript for JSX, etc. If you leave that off, then it means that your transpiler can figure out what the right extension is for this thing when it's uh, going to create it. All right, so let's get started. So if we're gonna build this in React, what we need to do is we need to go back and create all these different components. So let's start small and work our way up. So the first thing, if you'll recall, I'm just gonna pull up the code here. When we did all of these components, we said that we have a profile card and a profile card has an avatar and user info. So the avatar is pretty simple. The avatar looked like this. It was an image element where we're rendering a URL and we were gonna, well, let's just copy it and move it over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new file and I'll call this avatar.js. And I'm gonna paste in my original code, none of which am I gonna use. So I'll just comment it out, but it can be a useful starting point for how we're gonna think about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten this into a function. So I'm gonna say that I have a function called avatar, like so. And I have to um, export, the default thing that I'm gonna export is gonna be the avatar function. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'll have to do this over and over and over again. I'm also going to follow a pattern as I'm going. Every time, if I need to do any CSS, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the CSS file that goes along with it. Now there are different ways to do CSS in React. I'm gonna do just a really basic one. I'm not gonna do anything fancy today because I don't wanna make learning this any more complicated than it already is. So what I'm gonna do is every time I need to do any styling, I'm gonna add a second file, avatar.css. So I'm gonna have avatar.css and avatar.js, and avatar.css is gonna be responsible for importing um, importing that over, whatever you know, style that we need to do. Sorry, I need to import uh, avatar, like so, avatar.js, from the same, sorry, <laughs> CSS. Okay, so what does our avatar need to do? So in our previous code, we were accepting an image URL and a name. 
So I wanna do the same thing here. I wanna say, give me an image URL and a name. But remember that in React, we don't accept an arbitrary number of arguments on our function components. Instead, what we do is we accept props. So what I can do here is I could say, accept props. So props are gonna come from the parent component. They're gonna be properties that are being passed down to me. And if I wanted to, I could pull those off here. I could say image, URL, and name are gonna be destructed off of props like that, okay? And we also said that if we wanted to, we could just do that all in the top line here. So instead of saying props, we're gonna do it that way. And this is the way I'm gonna to tend to write it. So this means I have a function which takes an object and inside the object, I wanna pull these two properties out so that I can work with them. All right. So now down here, what we did with that was we stored that data onto the instance, which we don't need to do in this case. And then we rendered out a new image and the image had all of these different attributes set. So let's do the same thing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return an image. And I have a lot of things that I have to put in here. So I'm gonna say, um, number one, let's put in the width is equal to 128. Height, is equal to 128 and um, class name. Can't do it like that, so I have to do it like this, right? I have to do it with the uppercase N. Class name equals profile avatar, <clears throat> like so. And let's move this down here so that I can see what I'm doing. So these ones are all statically set. Right, like I'm, I'm using the number 128, I'm using the string profile avatar in order to uh, return these. And let's keep adding more. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to set the alt text. So I'm gonna say alt is equal to, now in here I could statically put a name, but I'm, I don't have a name, I have a variable. So I'm gonna put the, the, the name that was passed to me on props. So I'm gonna stick that here. And I'm gonna do the same with the title, like that. Finally, I wanna use that URL to set the source. So I'm gonna say the source is equal to image URL, like that. And if I save this, it'll reformat it for me. You'll see that to break it on a line, it's wrapped it in parentheses which is um, meaning that this extends on down. So this is a fairly simple component. I give it a URL and I give it a name and it automatically gives me back, um, it gives me back an image. So it renders these props into an image react element that looks like this, okay? So we can get rid of this and um, that's cleaned up. We had a little bit of CSS that we did before and so I'm gonna also just put the CSS in here. We set it up so that we used rounded corners on the image, we set the background color, etc. So I'll save that as well. Okay, so let's think about how we would use this. So at the top level here, let's put in um, our, let's put our avatar in here just so we have something to play with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the avatar component from avatar, like that. And then down here, instead of saying hello world, I'm gonna put my avatar like that. Now our avatar needs to be passed in two things. We need um, number one, we need an image URL is equal to something, and we also need a name is equal to something, like that. So for the moment, we don't have any data loading happening. Let's just take uh, some of the data that's here. Let's grab one of these URLs and we'll put it right here and we'll grab a name uh, here like that. So we have some data that's in there. Now, how do I pass that data into my avatar? So the avatar here is expecting to receive an image URL and a name on its props. So what we're gonna do in our app is we're gonna send those props. So I'm gonna say image URL equals, and I'm gonna give it the value that I've defined in my variable above, and the name is equal to this name. 
And I'll save this and let's see what happens. So this should rebuild if I still have this running. There we go. So I have a I have a uh, component that has been placed into the DOM. So let's just check out what's going on here. So if I go into my elements, if I go into body, and if I go into the root, you'll see that I have a div and the div has my app. Let me just make this a little bit narrower. You can see that I have the div that is here has been rendered into the DOM here. And inside that div, I have an image element. And the image element has all of the properties set that I set when I put this data into, uh, when I passed it down on props. So right now I'm looking at the actual DOM. Another thing that I can do is I can look at the virtual DOM. So if I go over to the React Dev Tools, I have the components area here, and you'll see that I am able now to get a slightly different view of what's going on in the page. So instead of seeing the entire DOM, what you're seeing over here is you're seeing the React DOM. So you're seeing my component tree. So I have my app, and if I click on the app or I click on avatar, I can get information. So for example, when I click on this avatar, over here you can see that it lets me see what the props are right here. So I have the ability to make changes here. So if I were to change one of these things, like for example, um, faces eight, let's say. So if I were to go here, if I were to change this to um, an eight, you'll see that this updated. So what's happened here is I have been able to, through the dev tools, I've been able to change what value is coming into my component. And what you'll see over here is that the URL has been changed over here when I make that change. The rest of the page didn't have to change. All we needed to change was that one piece of, of what was going on uh, inside of all that one piece of data that was being uh, sent in. All right, so we have an avatar. So let's keep going. What else do we need to make this work? So in addition to an avatar, we also need to be able to do the uh, user's name and their uh, email. So let's write another component. I'm gonna make a new file. I'm gonna call this user info, user info.js. Now it's in, um, here inside of Create React App, they're encouraging me to use .js. You, it would also be valid to call this .jsx if that's more comfortable for you in order to be able to separate those two things out. So just be aware of that. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm also gonna create a user info.css and I'm gonna import user info.css. Whoops, I'm in the wrong file. Take this, save this and import the CSS file here. And let's write our function. So we're gonna write a function user info User info is expecting to receive a name and an email. So I'm gonna say that name and email is going to come on props. And I'm gonna export a default user info function like so. So what do we need to have here? We're gonna return a div. I'll give it a class name so that I can style it of user info. And inside here, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna have an H2 for their name and an H3 for their email. And I'm also gonna generate a link for what goes in there. So let's do um, H2 class name equals profile name. And I wanna render the name that I received on props in here. So I'm gonna do an expression in my JSX. I'm gonna say name goes there. And I'm also gonna do this h3, and inside the h3, I'm gonna have an href, and the href is going to be another expression where I'm gonna do a template literal. So I'll write out a mail to link for their email. Now this is a tricky one. Whenever you're writing JSX and you need to include an expression, like I'm doing up here with name, you have to wrap it in uh, curly braces. Down here, I'm wrapping in curly braces, but I'm also doing 
uh, I'm doing an expression here and I am using curly braces inside. So it can mess with your head when you're looking at this quickly because you see multiple braces and they're doing different things. So if it's easier for you, what you could do is instead of doing that there, you could come up here and you could say uh, const mail to is equal to, and you could define a variable like that. If that's you know easier for you to think about, then I often find that sometimes I like doing things inline in the JSX, and sometimes it's easier to go and put it in JavaScript code up above and you know run my expressions that way. Both ways are correct, both ways will work. So we have an href with the mail to for this user. We wanna put their name in here for what we see when we do this. And that's perfect, that looks good. The user info, we have to do styling for user info, profile name, um, and also we need to put some uh, style on the uh, profile email. So I'll give this a class name as well, profile email, like that. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, I won't waste time recreating this CSS. I'll just copy and paste it from the old project. So we have Flexbox to manage the, um, the vertical layout here and the spacing of everything. And we're setting the colors and the font size for all of the different pieces and styling our anchor with a slightly different blue color. So I'll save that and user info is here. Now I need to use the user info. So let's try using the user info up in the top level here inside my app. So step one, I need to import it. Import user info from user info. And now I'm going to put it in here. Now this isn't gonna look right, but let's just do it anyway. So I'm gonna say that I have an avatar and um, I also have a user info. User info is expecting to receive two things on prop. It needs a name and an email. So let's let's just come up with a fake email. Const email is equal to at google.com. So we're gonna say name is equal to JSX expression name and email is equal to email. So one of the interesting things that's happening here is when you're creating your uh, React elements, when I was working with Avatar, sometimes you're gonna be working with these intrinsic, uh, like you're working with an element like an image, uh, and image has width, height, alt, title, etc. Remember that if you see a lowercase letter, it means that I wanna use a built-in uh, built element type like image. And you can use all the standard attributes that you would use on any element. These are all gonna work. But in addition to that, when you create your own React elements, you can concoct any name that you want. Like there's no such thing as an email attribute on any HTML element really. So I have to make up my own. So these names are whatever name you give in your, in your React component in, for the props that you wanna receive. So I'm gonna save this, let's see what happens. So now you can see that I've got an image here, I've got a name here, I've got an email, which is the link. So I'm starting to get the pieces. They're starting to, um, they're starting to come together. Now, when we built this before, what we did was we had the, the avatar and the user info were all connected into um, a, another component. We call this composition, they were composed. And we had something called a profile card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna rework it into a profile card. So let's just copy, uh, copy this and I'm gonna make another new file. Profilecard.js and profilecard.css. Okay, profilecard.js is gonna look like this. I need to import the CSS file, uh, profile and I need to import the user info and the avatar, that's correct. I need to 
create my profile card and export my profile card. And I need to receive a couple of things on props. So I'm going to need to receive um, an ID. Um, what else do we have in our previous example? We had an ID, we had an email, we had a name, and we had an avatar URL like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rework this so that it uses these pieces of data that are going to be received from the parent. So the, an important thing when you're building these components, you aren't worrying about where the data comes from. That's not the problem of a component. The component is to receive data on props and then to consume that data and to produce a view of the component that would, that would represent the data in that particular state. So in our case, what I want to do is I want to, uh, we had a section for the card. We gave each one of these an ID. So we said uh, the ID was user dash ID. We have a class name, profile card like so. And then we have an avatar and a user info. So here we're receiving a prop called avatar URL and we need to pass the avatar URL down to, the, to our avatar component. But it needs a prop called image URL. So sometimes what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be altering the names of properties. So as one parent passes it down to a child, that child passes it down to another child data keeps dropping down various levels of an application. So here I'm gonna say avatar URL, and we need to pass the name, we need to pass the name, we need to pass the email. So that looks correct to me. So let's try using this. Um, I guess I need to do the styles for this too. My profile card needs some uh, width. I need to set the uh, minimum width. Uh, I need to put some space between it, use Flexbox, etc. Okay, so let's go and um, let's connect this up. So at the top level of our app, instead of using avatar and user info, I'm gonna import my profile card. And one of the advantages of using composition, so when I talk about composition, what I mean is a profile card composes an avatar and a user info component into a new thing, into something new. These separate components are being combined and now I'm making something that is greater than those individual parts. I'm putting them together through composition. And one of the nice things about composition is it tends to simplify your code. So up, up here, instead of having to worry about managing all of this data, I'm go, you know, multiple components and different ways of working with different components, I'm gonna simplify it and I'm gonna say I have a profile card like that. My profile card needs to receive data. So let's, let's grab some data here so that we can work with this. I'm gonna grab this data and I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna say const user is equal to this data right here. And now I'm gonna use this user data. So let's think about what a profile card needs. Profile card needs all of these props to be sent. So down here, I need to specify all of these things. So I need to say ID is equal to the user ID. Email is equal to the user email. Uh, name. So the name needs to be combined from these two things. So let's say const name is equal to user user um, first name space user dot last name like that. So now I could just pass down the name instead of having to uh, do this. So sometimes, you know, I want to simplify things rather than having complex expressions here. I do variables above. 
Because it's JavaScript, I can do anything I can do in JavaScript that's going to work just fine. And I need to pass in the avatar URL. So I'm going to say avatar URL is equal to uh, user.avatar, like this. And let's go back here. Let's save this and see. So here now we have the we have the image, we have the name, we have the email. If we look at our DOM, you can see that we have a section. The section inside it has an image. It has a div for the user's name and the email address. And if we look at the components, we have the same thing. Our app has a profile card. Profile card has an avatar component and a user info component. And so you can see that all of the props are visible to us. Everything that's being passed down on props, we can see all of the pieces that are coming in that React is receiving. So this is good. This, uh, this looks good. Now, the next thing we should do is we should deal with the fact that uh, we need more than one of these things to be displayed. So let's do the following. I'm going to grab two of them. And I'm going to change my code a little bit. I'm going to say, what if we have uh, const users equals an array of objects like this? So I have not one, but two of these users that I have to deal with. All right. So now we got to figure out how we're going to deal with the problem that we have. So the problem that we have is we need to render a profile card for each one of these users that we have up here. Okay. So I need to, I need to create a way to put more than one of these profile cards inside this down here. And I have, I have like an arbitrary number of them. I have an array of them. So what I really need to be able to do is I need to be able to um, create a new, a new array. So let's say const profiles is equal to users.map. So remember we talked about the fact that we have this list of data and I'd like to take JSON data and I'd like to turn it essentially into this. So we, we kind of already have the code that we want. We just need to turn it into a function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to map a function across all of the users in my array. So here I'm going to say, give me the first user. So give me this user right here and pass it into my function. My function is going to take a user and it's going to return what? Well, it's going to return back a profile card, something that looks like this. So let's do that. I'm going to say return a profile card like so. So what we have to do is we have to fix one thing here. I need to take this name and I need to put name inside here like that. So let's just figure out what we have here for a second. We have a list of users, two users. We're going to call this function. So this is a function that takes a user. It maps a user. To, it returns a profile card for each user. So we are turning data into React elements, like so. So I'm going to, when I'm done, I'm going to have an array that's going to look like this. Essentially, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a profile card and another profile card like that. I'm just going to have this array of profile cards. OK, so that's what's going to get stored inside of uh, inside of pro inside of profiles. So now we need to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this section here. And instead, I'm going to put my profiles array right there. Now, this may seem weird. So let me run it and then talk to you about what it looks like. So here's my code. Now, my uh, can't access name before initialization. It's unhappy with me 
on line 28, const name, uh, what is it unhappy with? And let's just simplify this because we're only so there. Okay, so take the users and uh, in our components inside of our app, we have two profile cards that have been rendered. And each profile card has the same set of components, but we have, we have multiple instances of them. And when, when, you, when you do something like this, what you're saying is I want to evaluate whatever is here. So another thing you could do is instead of writing this here, what you'll see other people do is they will just, they'll do this expression down there. So another way we could write this is we could say, I'm gonna stick that expression right here. And uh, what have I done wrong? Users. Dot map, what am I doing wrong? Can't, oh, the semicolon here. There. So this, I don't know if this is more or less readable for you, um, but what it means is it means take everything inside here and evaluate it. So if you want to pull that out into its own, um, into something that goes up here like this and say const profiles equals this and then put profiles here, you can do that, okay? And that'll work. Another thing that we could do, though, that's actually maybe even a little bit cleaner is we could make this into its own um, component. So I could have something called profiles. And so what does profiles do? Profiles is a function which receives on props a list of users. Um, like this. And let's, let's just take the code that we're starting to build in app because this code's getting a little bit complicated. Let's take this code right here. Let's get rid of it from here and let's go over here and drop it in here and pull in the profile card. Import the profile card from the profile card file. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna return this expression right here. We're going to return, we're going to take the list of users and we're going to map those users into the following profile card. So profiles is now essentially driving the profile card usage for us, which means if we go back to our app, we don't need to pull in profile card. We can just pull in profiles like so. And we can modify this so that it uses profiles and we pass the users down. So we say users is equal to the list of users like that. And so there, this here it is working uh, in the browser. Now we have an error. We have a warning actually. It says each child in a list should have a unique key. So one of the things that React is doing is it is managing all of these profile cards for us. And it needs to be very efficient about making changes to these. If the data ever changes, right now we're not changing the data, the data is fixed. But if we ever wanted to change this data, we need a way to say that this piece of data matches up with this profile card. And we don't currently have a good clean way of doing that yet. We need to give React a hint. 
Okay, so let's do that right now. So in our profiles, what I'm going to do, every time I make a new profile in this list, I'm going to give it a key. And the key is a unique identifier for this profile card. And so you want some unique piece of data. In our case, we have a nice unique piece of data and that is the user ID. So I'm gonna save this. And you'll see that now I have profile card key equal seven, profile card key equal eight. I've given React, the warning will, will if I rerun this, the warning is gone. And React is happy now because it can have a list of any number of profile cards. And it knows the difference between profile seven and profile eight. So they, are, they can be different one from the next. Okay, so this is looking good. Let's go a bit further. So right now we have a situation where our data is statically um, set inside of our component and we need to do it in a, in a different way. So in our old application, if you look at what we did down here, we had a file called users.js and it took care of loading the data for us. So actually we can probably use this as a starting point. So I'm going to make a new file in our React app called users.js. And this, I'll just make a couple of modifications. I will change this to export default equals, uh, export default load, like so. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to load in the list of users from the API. We're going to fetch it. We're going to make sure that the response was good. Then we're going to return the JSON. Uh, we're going to parse the JSON and return it to our next then, which is going to um, grab the data out of it. So if we look at the way that the data comes back, we get an object. The first part of the object is metadata. The second part of the object is the actual data that we want. And we're going to give back that data over here. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go over here and I'll say uh, users equals, let's pull in, let's import our um, load function from users. So what would happen if we did this? What if we just said load, right? So load the users and then render the users down here right? Like how, how would that work? So let's save this and see what happens. So it console here, it's unhappy with me, uh, is not a function. Did I not, what did I do wrong? Function load. Oh, I need to not this. I need to save this. And let's load this again. So it says users.map is not a function. Users.map is not a function. And if we were to go and um, if we were to debug our, um, our code, if I were to look at, uh, where am I here? I need to, no, no, where am I? Uh, which bundle do I want to be in? Static JS. Here we go. Uh, no. No source. Uh, I want to be in app.js. So I'll go right here. So we refresh this. Okay. Const users equals load. So I step over this and you can see that users is equal to a promise. It's not equal to uh, an array, I don't have an array yet. So this isn't gonna work. So I need to, uh, I need to fix this so that I can work with um, the array, I can work with the promise that's being returned to me. Okay, so if we go back to our app, let's think about this. I'm gonna go to my app. I now have a problem. I need to, I need to do something with the way that React is running, but I'm not in control of when things happen with React. So you'll notice that I never called my app function. What I really need is I need a way to say, 
I want to uh, I want to run this this code, but I need to make sure that when the data comes back, that I'm not like it's gonna the timing is all gonna line up with what's going on. But if you look at my function component, all it does is it takes data and it renders all of this down here. So what I have to do is I have to make use of something in React called a hook. So the idea behind hooks are that I have special functions that I can call. So hooks go here, hook functions. And the name comes from the fact that I wanna be able to hook into the life cycle of my component. So as React is doing various things with my component, I want to be able to add little hooks. I want to be able to put functions on those hooks and do things. So a hook lets us um, work with, it lets us work with React and produce side effects essentially. Because this function doesn't have any side effects. Like a, an example of a side effect would be if I had a global variable, you know, var global, and inside here, I set global equals global plus one, right? Like where I'm reaching out of my function and I'm doing some side effects. So calling this function constantly updates global. See, that's not how these functions work. These functions are self-contained. You call it and it returns to you a set of React elements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull in a special part of React I'm going to import a hook called use effect. So what I am now going to be able to do is I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say um, use effect and use effect takes a function like that. So I'm going to write it as a arrow function. So I have I have an effect that I want to run. And inside here, what I'm going to do for now, let's just console.log, console.log use effect. And let's run this again. And it's going to be unhappy with me until I make users uh, const users equals, let's make it an empty array. Okay, so you can see down here that my effect ran. Use effect, let's, let's refresh this again. Here is my use effect, it was run. So I now have a way to, I have a way to run this code and um, let's just write another thing down here, console.log uh, rendering react elements. And so you can see that my, if I clean this out and I run this again, you can see that it renders my elements. So it, it runs through and renders, it renders all of this. And then you can see that it uses the effect next. So the effect happens uh, as the second thing that goes by. So I have a place, I have a hook where I can do things after the initial render. So what I wanna do in here is I wanna load I want to load in the the users, so I'm going to say load dot then, and I'm going to get back um, the data. And for now, let's just console log it. Okay, so what's happening now is it renders the it renders the page like this. Nothing appears because there's no data, and then it gets back these items, these uh, users right here like that. Okay, so now I've got an interesting situation that I have to deal with. I need a way to be able to take the data that comes back from um, that comes back from loading, you know, loading in this page of data, and I need to be able to hold on to it. So I need a way to be able to work with state. So up until this point, the only thing we've had access to were props. Props were these, were these variables that came down with a component. When a component got rendered, we were able to say, I'd like to be able to pass you this data. 
but we didn't have a way, this, this component here doesn't have any data of its own. It doesn't maintain any state. So maintaining state would be something like, you know, if you said, uh, I have a total const total equals zero. And then it, I want to say const or total plus equals one like that. You know what's going to happen. This is going to happen the first time we get to here, it's going to get blown away. So then you might say to yourself, well, what I really want to do is I really want to be able to put some state outside of this function. I need a way for total to keep going, to keep accumulating over and over and over again. So what you're doing here is you're adding in this concept of, of a component having state. And if we were doing this with a class-based component, we could do this in like, it could be stored on the instance of the class. But with a function, what are we going to do? We need some way to do an equivalent thing to what we're doing there. So we have another hook that we can use in React in addition to working with side effects to hook into the life cycle. We can also use, we can use a hook called use state. So here's the concept of it. Instead of doing this, I want to be able to do something like this, const users equals that. I want to move users out somewhere else. I want to be able to have access to it. And then I want to be able to get and work with users in here. So I'm not going to use globals like this. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this code. Users set users is equal to use state like this. And users is not defined. Oh, sorry, const. Okay, so let's explain what's going on here. Um, so if I drop into the debugger, I want you to take a look at what users is. Users is an array and set users is a function. So what just happened here? So what I'm doing is I am declaring some state for this component and I'm giving an initial, this is the initial value. So the initial value of this is going to be an empty array. I'm using an empty array because I want my code down here to work. It's not gonna do anything, but it's not gonna crash. So the use state hook returns two things to me. It returns an array of two things, and I'm using this destructuring again to be able to get those things. The first thing is, so this thing here, this is the current value. So users is the current value of that state. And set users is a way to update the current value. So React is going to manage my state for me. I don't know where it's putting it exactly. It's in memory, but I don't, it's not in a global variable. It's not in another module that I'm, I'm using. I'm, I'm telling React, I want to use a little bit of state. I want to, I want to have an array. I want you to manage the array for me. So every time you render this app, the very first time I want you to set the initial value. And then every time thereafter, when you render this, I want you to return to me the list of users that is stored in state. So how do I set that list of users? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the set users function. So down here, instead of logging the data, I'm gonna say set users data. Like that. So I every time this runs, I'm going to have the current value and I'm also going to have a way of updating that value. So let's just put some console logs in here so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to log users when I first come in. I'm going to console.log, and let me do this. I'll say, um, starting app. So it's starting at the top of the app. In here, uh, this is use effect is being is running. 
And down here, this is when console.log um, load finished. And I'll just pass the data here so you can see what the data looks like. And down here, I'll say, yeah, rendering React elements. So if we run this now, let's take a look at what it does. Console. Clean this out. This thing, can you see what it's doing? It's running nonstop. It's fetching, 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 fetching. So I want to stop this. I don't want it to uh, to do that. So I'm going to just kill the page for a second. I want to explain what's going on. So here's what's happening. The very first time it starts up and users, the first time through, users is going to be equal to an empty array. So that's what's going to happen the first time. And it's going to it's going to render the app with users equal to the empty array. And the, the next thing that's gonna happen immediately after it does that render is it's going to fire my side effect here, which is going to kick off a load to, uh, it's gonna kick off a load to the, um, to the server. And it's gonna say, um, I wanna load this data. And when it's done being loaded, I wanna set the users. Now, anytime you call set users, anytime you update the state of a component, what React is going to do is it's going to say, OK, because this data has changed, I now need to re-render all of these components. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they all have to change. But what it does mean is that they all have to be recalculated and the differences have to be figured out. So it's going to set it. And then what it's going to do is, because it's re-rendering my function, it's running the whole function again, it's going to run this side effect again. So what I need to do in my, um, in my effect, use effect takes two arguments. So the first one is a function that's going to be run. And the second one is a list of dependencies that tell React which variables do I need to watch? And when they update, I need to change them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to list and say that I have no dependencies, but I'm going to give it an empty list, meaning I only want to run this the first time. So let's just make that change and rerun this code. And I'm going to localhost 3000. Inspect. Console. OK, here's what happens. So you can see. It starts up the app and it gets an empty array first time through. It renders the it renders the whole app. And then it runs the effect, which causes it to trigger the data loading. So then the load finishes and there are six uh, pieces of data that get set into the user state. Because we call set users, React is going to um, React is going to have to re-render the whole page. So it calls this function again, and it goes and it re-renders it so that all of these components are shown. So like when I refresh this, you don't really see it render the page multiple times, but it does render it multiple times because the first time through, it doesn't have the data. The second time through, it does have the data. So that's interesting. All right, so let's make one more change to this just before we finish. And I want to modify the way that the users works just to show you um, to show you a little bit about um, how we could work with paging data and so on. So I'm going to modify my function. And if you let's just take a look at this API for a second. The way this API works, you can pass in a page number, page equals two or page equals one. So I want to modify my URL so that I can say um, page equals and whatever the number is. So I'm going to change load so that you pass in a page. And if you don't give me a page, I'm going to default to page one. So down here, I'm going to change this to be whatever the page that you just passed me was. So page one, for example. Already, this should work. Like, if I don't do anything else, if I rerun this, whoops, wrong. If I, re, if I save this, 
and rerun this, it works fine. So it's loading the first page right here. You can see it loaded page one um, of the data. If I said to it, I want you to load page two, so if I go here and if I said load page two, I'd get a different set of data when it starts up. You'll see that I have different, different things here. Okay, so I have another piece of state here. I have whatever page you're on right now. So I wanna add some more state. So up at the top of my code here, I'm gonna say const uh, page or let's say current page and set current page is equal to use state one. So I start off on the first page and const total pages and set total pages is equal to use state one. So when my app runs, I'm just gonna have some default values in these variables. I'm gonna have um, one, and we could do it here if I said uh, users, current page, and total pages. So if I run this, um, whoops, total pages, I need to close my object. You'll see that it gives me all this information. So I have an empty array, the current page is one, and the total pages are one to begin with. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify my code so that when the data comes back to me, instead of, um, I'm gonna return the full result from this API and I'm going to set not only the users, let me show you what I mean. Over here, right now, what we're doing is we're doing this. We're, we're receiving the data from the API and we're pulling off the data array and we're skipping all of this other stuff. But what I wanna do is I wanna give back this entire object like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this part of the code so that it doesn't do that anymore. And if it fails for some reason, I'm gonna modify what we return so that I give back pages one, total um, pages is one, and data is the empty array. So I'll, I'll give back something so the program doesn't crash, like so. And over here in the app, I'm gonna modify things so that I receive the result, and I'm just gonna use it to set all these values. So in my app, I'm gonna say that I want to do, uh, set the total number of pages to be equal to result.totalPages. Set the current page to be equal to result.page. And set the users to be equal to result.data, like so. So now we need to make another slight modification and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna add, well, let me, let, let's, let's do this just to, just to prove that it's working first of all, let's make another modification. So instead of loading page two, I'm gonna load the current page like so. And you'll see that I right away, I get an error that says, I have a missing dependency, current page. So React wants to know if you're going to load the current page, when do I need to rerun this side effect? The only time you need to rerun this side effect is if the current page changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I am depending on current page here like this. So if we run this and we take a look at this over here, we get our first page of data. This is all working really nicely. If I were to set the state here to be two, I would get back the second page instead of the first page. So the only thing I don't have yet is I don't have a way to switch between pages. So let's do that. Let's, let's throw in here another, um, let's put in a, a paging component. I'm gonna say paging, current page is equal to current page 
total pages is equal to uh, total pages like so. Uh, let's start with that. Make a new component, paging. Paging takes current page, total pages, and it's going to return, um, let's say it returns a div, and inside the div is a button. And what should the button say? Well, we need to, it kind of depends. It depends on whether or not, um, so the label that we're gonna use is going to be equal to um, if if the current page is equal to the total number of pages, then I guess we need to say previous, and if not, we'll say next. So our label here can be uh, label like that, and Let's just make sure this part is working. So paging, we'll pull this in, import paging from paging, save this. Uh, and I forgot to export it. Export default paging, like this. Okay, so now I have a next button. The next button doesn't do anything yet. So let's throw in a click handler. So when we click on this button, on click, let's call a function. So on click handler. And we'll write up on const on click handler is equal to a function here. So we have we have a click handler. And let's just calculate what the new page should be. So if the current page is equal to the total pages, then um, you know let new page, uh, let's say the new page is equal to uh, the current minus one. If that's not the case, then the new page is equal to uh, current plus one. And we can console.log uh, on click handler new page. So save this. So if we click this, uh, new page equals this, you can see, well, what's the problem here? It's always two. Why is it always two? It's always two because we are using the data that's coming down into us from props. And inside of our app, nothing is changing the the default, uh, nothing is changing the, the number that we're using. So I'm just gonna get rid of these console logs. Nothing's making a change to it. So I wanna be able to make a change to it. How do I change the current page? Well, we know how to change the current page. So if we had a function like change page is equal to a function that receives a new page, what would we do? We would say set current page equal to the new page. So we know how to do this. We know how to write a function that calls our set page function here, but we don't have any way to call it. So we need to pass this function down to our paging. So this is another fundamental idea about React that data flows down through the system. So I'm going to put the logic for what you do when something happens on a component, like when you change the page on a paging component, I'm gonna put that logic into the parent and I'm gonna pass that function down to the paging component. So what I'm gonna do on the paging component is provide a way to receive it. So 
So let's make a let's put a slot in here. Let's have another prop called on uh, page change. It's a function that we're going to receive. So instead of calling the uh, console.log here, I'm going to call that function on page change, and I'm going to pass new page. So I have a click handler. The user clicks on the button. It's going to fire this function. This function is going to calculate the new page, and it's going to return nothing. It's instead going to call this function, which is being passed to me. So I'm slowly wiring all these things up. I'm wiring a button in the DOM to my component, and I'm wiring this component to its parent component. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go back to the app, and I'm going to make use of this. So what, was, what did I call it? I called it on page change. So let's just um, handle page change just for consistency. And down here on our paging, I'm going to say on page change is equal to handle page change like that. All right, so in theory, this should work. Let's see if it does. So I'm going to refresh this. I'm on page one. I'm going to click next, and it works. Now I'm on the next page. If I hit previous, I go back a page, forward a page, back a page. If I turn off my uh, network caching, this will run a lot smoother. You'll see here, if I go next, previous, so you can see that what React is doing, if I open up this div, you will see it happen. So if I do previous and next, you can see the DOM is changing, but it's only changing the parts of the DOM that need to be changed. So let's open up one of these. So if I do next, previous, you can see that these are changing. Or if I go and look at it inside of my component tree, when I do next and previous, you can see that these elements are changing. What's really interesting about React is we're not providing any of the infrastructure to run the scheduling of this app. All we're doing is we're providing a way to load the data, we're providing a way to render that data, but React figures out when to do everything and it actually does all of those things for us. It's taking care of what happens in the page. So for us, all that we have to take care of is managing our state. So we set the initial value of the current page and we make it possible for the user to change the page. So in our paging component here, whenever this click handler happens, we're updating the page. But think about how simple this paging component is. The paging component has no concept about loading data from an API. It doesn't know about putting images on the page. It doesn't know about the whole application. It's highly isolated. It only understands these three pieces of data, these props. It receives a current and a total, and it renders all of that and defines itself based on these values. So if these values change, if the app at the top level changes, then all of these things are going to change down below as, as well. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to post all of this code, and you can go through it and have a look at it. And I want to stress that the number of new concepts here, the number of ideas, it, it's going to, I know it's going to overwhelm you. It's hard to even describe this quickly. Like I'm trying to give you lots of uh, explanation about what's going on, but so many things are going on, so many concepts that the first few times you see this, it may not, it may not click. So I want you to be patient with yourself. Don't run away from it. You need to read the React docs. You need to look at the notes for this week. We're going to have to practice this. We're going to be doing React for quite a few weeks. And I want you to slowly start to think about how re the, the fundamental ways that React how it's working. And the code that we looked at for this example today is kind of a good example. It uses a little bit of a lot of aspects of React. It's not a super complicated React application, but it's got enough that we can see how to write components, how to compose components into larger pieces, how to work, work with functional components that just use props from their parent, 
how to use state and how to define state within a within a component that can be passed down and change in the child how this application can become dynamic so because react is managing the state if any of those state variables change it 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 cascades through the whole tree and it causes new things to happen new behaviors data to load new things to render things to be hidden but i'm not doing any dom manipulation i'm not going in and querying for elements i'm I mean, I, I didn't write any HTML really. I did everything just through functions, writing functional components, fetching data, passing data down to functions, and then having React uh, render all of those as React elements. Anyway, <laughs> it's a long video. I'm gonna pause, pause it there and ask you to follow up with me and ask questions online. And let me know what you're finding interesting, difficult, confusing about this. React takes time to get. It's worth the investment. So uh, welcome to your uh, the beginning of the journey of getting good at React. It's, it, it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's a fun ride.